Oh god, I'm seeing double. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back. So, I realize at this point, I, I think these videos that I'm starting to make are kind of a result of COVID-19 and robbing me of aspects of life. Like, you know, the last day of school. And I'm still on my depression. I still have my post-game depression, and oh, does it cut deep. Oh! Oh, does it cut deep. I mean, every time I think of it, it makes my stomach ache. It, it makes my breath shaky, as I'm sure you just heard when I inhaled, because I certainly caught it. Oh, it's painful, man. It's painful. Oh my god, it's so painful. I'm just over here looking at stuff on YouTube, like soundtracks and such, and a mother. <laughs> Life would be so much easier if I just allowed myself to cuss. But we have to remain Christian. So... On this one, I, I, I'm redoing a video I tried to do uh, all of about 30 minutes ago. Uh, and I want it to be more structured. I, I want to talk about story-driven and gameplay-driven. Now, it's something I want to talk about when it comes to comparing and contrasting games and honestly messages they might convey themes they might seek because I feel both story driven and, and gameplay driven they, they hit aspects that the other can't hit right in the original version of this video I talked about I was talking about you know why why is it that most games can't have both and both being why can't games have both incredible stories backed by great gameplay. Usually it's almost like pick or uh, take it or leave it. Either you have one or you have the other. And I think there's a good reason why and it, and it's it comes with understanding what gameplay driven and story driven what they can hit, what, what they can aim for because I don't think they're equal and I don't think you should treat them as equal. When I think of a gameplay-driven game, I think of the one that I'm playing in the background. By the way, tidbit, because all of this stuff is live, um, I don't really know why I always end up playing Dark Souls 1 when I want to talk about stuff. I'm really bad at playing games and not talking about the game or with people. I'm very bad at, for as many years as I've been playing games, I am absolutely horrific at talking and playing games, like, you know, making commentary such as this. And I feel this is one of, if not the only game that I can really do it on kind of almost flawlessly. Because obviously it's not my specialty. I'm not a commentary person. Although I think I have good words to be said. Going back on track, there are certain themes, certain messages that simply, I think, story-driven and gameplay-driven they can't hit both. For example, a gameplay-driven game would be one like the one you're seeing right now, Dark Souls 1. Or just Dark Souls in general. It's a game that was that gained a lot of its nor notoriety because of its difficulty. Prepare to Die Edition, toting about, you know, beating this game as like a legendary accolade in, in your career as a gamer. And when people think back to Dark Souls, they think of their personal achievements, right? They don't think of the story of the game, obviously. Um, you know, when you think of Dark Souls, you're not thinking of how the Chosen Undead went from being rescued from an asylum to facing the Lord of Cinder. As powerful as that is, is that what you think? Is that what comes to your mind when you think of Dark Souls? No. I think when you think of Dark Souls, especially if you've played it, you think of what was once a grueling, hellish experience where you were getting battered left, right, and center, feeling rage you didn't know existed, but then coming out on top, hopefully. <laughs> this is, of course, coming from the perspective of you completing the game. But then coming out on top, learning, and beating the what's was seemingly impossible 
and thinking of your personal accomplishments. When I when I think of memorable moments in Dark Souls, I think of moments where I struggled but I overcame. For example, my my most memorable moment in all of Dark Souls, um, even now, is when I was younger, and I was still playing Dark Souls One, trying to beat it. This was before Dark Souls. This is before Dark Souls Two came out. I was trying to beat Dark Souls One. And the worst part in the game for me, and it will never leave my memory, it's a, it's a memory that's permanently ingrained, embedded into my mind, is the Silver Knights. The Silver Knight Archers. And you know the part, the part that I'm talking about. And Anorlando, those two Silver Knights on that small beam. That was the worst part of the game for me. I was cry, I was bawling my eyes out in frustration in front of my father. Um... Because of how upset I was at how much my my behind was getting kicked on that section. But that didn't stop me. And through the tears, through the red puffy eyes, through the snorting, through the snot. After definitely over an hour, I did it. And now moving forward, every time I get to that section, it's a cakewalk. It's extremely simple. Which is almost funny because it shows just how just how simple that area actually is, but just how different the experience was for some people. Like, I'm sure there are many people that got through that area first try in less than 30 seconds, knowing exactly what to do. For me, it, it was my worst experience ever in Dark Souls for the entire franchise. The Silver Knight Archers. Iconic. They are iconic. I know for a fact that those two dudes are iconic for beating people up, but that has a, a special place in my heart with that game. Nothing about the game story to me is what I think of when I'm reflecting back on Dark Souls. And Dark Souls is another amazing game franchise that is near and dear to my heart. It, this game is part of, you know, my youth. Um, but when I think of Dark Souls, I think of my personal accomplishments as a player. And not the story that I experienced. And then we go, contrast, we think of a more story-driven game. Let's go back to what's making me sad. We go back to The Last of Us. In a game like that, it's story-driven. I'm thinking more so as to who, who I just witnessed rather than what I just did. Here's the thing. When I think of story-driven compared to gameplay-driven, I think weaker gameplay, but weaker gameplay doesn't mean bad. When I, when I say weaker in this context, I'm thinking of... Hmm. What am I thinking of when I say weaker gameplay? Obviously, I mean it's not the focus, but it doesn't have to be bad. Like, for example, in the last video I, I made, I touched up on how the controls of The Last of Us and the gameplay of it might feel what can be considered clunky, but it does things to make it still feel like excellent gameplay in the way that it goes less for fluidity and more for impact. You know, more for making it feel true to life and immersive with how animations react to the environment, how you react to damage, rather than the process of getting the damage done and taking it, you know? If that makes sense. It doesn't mean the gameplay is weaker, it means it's not the driving point, like how it is for a game like Dark Souls. When I think of memorable moments from The Last of Us, I think of the cutscenes. I think of moments where characters are bonding. I, I, I really let let me tell you, when I when I talk about these games, right, and I get into my bag, <laughs> and I get into my depressive state, I want to talk about the game, but then I realize I'm a very nice person and I don't want to include spoilers, even if the only people that watch my videos know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, look, I'm a very empathetic person, believe it or not. I know many of my friends might not think that. I want to keep any and all spoilers possible out of videos that I make, so I won't talk about specifics. But when I think of The Last of Us, I think of those cinematic moments, those pieces that I witnessed, where I'm just standing in awe at the gravity of what, I see, what, I, what I've seen. Give me one second. One, one second to get away from what I'm talking about to like focus on the actual game I'm playing right now because I'm getting my arse handed to me. Yeah, when I think of a game like that or The Walking Dead, I think of key moments in the story where 
the character I'm playing as, or the characters I'm witnessing, experience something, not something that I experience, you know? When I'm thinking of Dark Souls, I'm thinking of those terrible things that I face as a player. When I'm thinking of TWD or TLOU, I'm thinking of what the characters I'm playing as experience. Do you understand? Oh. And I think th the original title of the video that I'm basically redoing here, it was titled, Why Can't We Have Both? Because I, I, I want to talk about what... what gameplay driven and what story driven what they can hit when I, when what i think a gameplay driven game hits is personal accomplishment elation that high of success of you overcoming the impossible something that you have personal history with at this point on how much it just bashed you in the skull but you overcame it as a player you understood the systems of the game, and you came out on top. And that's what you remember. In a story... In a story, personal accomplishment isn't what you're thinking of. You're thinking of lessons learned, revelations you've had after, things, you, things, that, don't, things that you don't think of... Th things you don't think of on the first... at first thought, but when you go back to it, then you realize with, you know, your revelations. I, and I think that helps uh, my, my whole point of, the you know, the second time I played The Walking Dead was the better experience than the first time. Because after I experienced everything, and the second time I played it is when I understood. Yeah, story-driven, I, I think, it goes more to you learning things personally I think gameplay driven is more in the moment experiences and thoughtful reflection. When I when I think of story driven, I think of more sorrow reflection, you know. And I think we can't have both many of times because w when something overpowers another thing, you can't have a good balance, right? I if a game if a game has an incredible story, let's say Skyrim, or let's say Skyrim or Dark Souls, had the best story of all time. Now that's a that that sentence in itself doesn't make any sense because you know it's it's incredibly subjective. But just try to think in your head. These gameplay-driven games, where the story is also an incredible, remarkable, magnificent ten out of ten masterpiece, but with gameplay overshadowing it, yeah, you'll never come to appreciate it. When you when you look back at it, you think of the open world experience you had in Skyrim, where that dragon was fighting you and you were trying to take on giants and then the giants ended up helping and that is what ends up being memorable rather than you defeating Alduin after literally going into he you literally enter heaven to stop the world eater. Doesn't that sound crazy? That happened. But is that what you think of when you think of Skyrim? I don't think so. And then, let's let's say let's say The Walking Dead season one had was <laughs> had Call of Duty esque shooting, you know, incredibly fluid, you know, that genre defining gunplay. And let's say that's how it was in all the action sequences. Do you get what I mean? I, I'm I'm trying to go off of something that you're trying to visualize. I, I'm trying to paint a picture here. Um, but obviously that needs <laughs> that needs your mental input. You you unfortunately you I don't think you can no you let me not say that don't speak in absolutes. You can have the best of both sometimes, but in other in other times in order to convey your your message you know as a game developer you you need to make sacrifices. You know when 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 you wanted to, when you want to convey the struggle of a world like The Last of Us, you need to make things hard for the player in the gameplay which it does it conveys you know um i'm i'm i don't want to trip over my words and you'll have to excuse me if, if this is bothering you the way i'm talking 
you have to understand I make these videos very late at night where I'm honestly very tired. I need I need this chance to talk, you know. Where was where was I? Oh God, where was I? <laughs> Hold on, I'll, I'll get to it. Yes, when you want to convey the story of The Last of Us, you need to you need the player to suffer through the gameplay. When the cinematics can be the highlight, and things outside of the standard issue gameplay where you're moving through the world aren't the highlight, y you need to. It conveys that struggle, right? with how hard it is to succeed, with how hard it is to aim, with knowing the pressure of making every shot count. And although that might seem annoying at first, you you later come to appreciate it as it makes you feel all the more there with with the character, right? And then when you think of a game like the one I'm playing right now, Dark Souls, where it's gameplay driven, it needs to... The story, you're driven, you know, it's a standard issue story, really. You're you're the chosen one. Dark Souls really is just about being the chosen one. And at the beginning, things are rough, but you only get stronger and stronger, even though the difficulties only get greater. But at that point, you've become too powerful of a force, and it it conveys <clears throat> it conveys that through the gameplay. With the leveling system, with the better gear that you equip, you just become this thing of legend. When, but a few hours ago, maybe. You were being rescued from an asylum, basically naked, like a reverse infant. When I say a reverse infant, I mean, you know, an infant, naked, defenseless, doesn't really know its purpose. That's where you were at the beginning of Dark Souls. You were hopeless at, at that stage until someone rescued you, and you became the hero of the universe, the game's universe. And I think both games do their part. I think The Last of Us conveys its message of, you know, grittiness, redemption, through excellent story, and gameplay that backs it up. Gameplay that doesn't aim to be the focus, but helps helps drive the story. Helps helps the player helps the player get into the shoes of the character. Maybe that's how I could word it. Because honestly, the thing I'm—the thing that's making me stutter so much here is I, I don't want to mess up my wording. And I think that's how I would word it: gameplay that helps push the message of the story. And in the—it's the reverse in a gameplay-driven game. In a game like this, it's a story that's conveyed through the gameplay. And I think. There are some instances, th there are some instances where we can have some of the best of both. Let's think to, say, Black Ops. Black Ops campaign. I played all three of them. Well, yeah, <laughs> I forgot, 4 doesn't have a campaign. LMFAO. Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2. I don't know anything about Modern Warfare, sorry. Those games have the incredible, you know, genre-defining FPS shooting from Call of Duty. But they also have a story that really pulls you in. You're interested in the characters in the world, and the gameplay actually helps convey that message. You know, Call of Duty gameplay is one of a kind. It's extremely memorable. When you think of Call of Duty, you think of the gameplay, but you also might think of the story. And I think you'll only really find that in games like Call of Duty and Halo. Notice the shooter games coming out on top here. I think in order to have the best of both worlds... It's hard in games. There are sacrifices that need to be made, and sometimes those sacrifices are good. If it's a story-driven game, it'll have it'll have things that are better than in a gameplay-driven game, and vice versa. But I think at this point, I'm repeating myself. You you get my point. There are sacrifices that need to be made in games, but I think, oh God, hold on. Well, let's experience this. All right, witness some Dark Souls PvP. All right, Obsidian Greatsword. Okay. How do I do this? <laughs> he's going to have a flip ring. Watch, he's going to flip. All right, he's backing me into Ents. I'm not going to fight some Ents. Oh, he used power within. Okay. He used power within, and he buffed his Obsidian Blade, so he's aiming to one-shot Hornet ring me.
Nice. Isn't this Dark Souls PvP exciting? Alright, GG. Yes, when, y when you're... In games, sacrifices need to be made in order to convey your message with the game. Dark Souls conveys its message of, I think, struggle through its gameplay, which is, helped, which is backed up by its story in order to convey the hero's journey of being a chosen one. And I think The Last of Us conveys its message through its story, which is back from its gameplay, with The Last of Us hero's journey being, you know, redemption. Having the world taken from you, and you taking everything from the world, because it's just how much you've been beaten down, and not, be not just having enough, reaching breaking points, and coming out on top personally, even though looking at it from the perspective of, you know, the fate of the world, because that's how that's kind of the story of The Last of Us One. Um, it might not be okay for the fate of the people, you know. I I hope I'm not. I, don't, don't take the way I'm saying this to as me trying to sound smart. I'm legit just. I I want to get my point across. I don't want to make any mess ups. That, that's all. That's why I'm having such a hard time conveying this. I think that's about it. I'm going to continue moving on life through my depression. Uh, oh, God. Just thinking about it makes my stomach twist. But, I mean, that's just what I signed up for, didn't I? I I'm going to keep it a buck. I need to get myself a PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've had enough. I can't keep looking at the store and realizing I can't have this, you know? I'm experiencing all all of this all over again, man. It couldn't have ended with The Walking Dead. It just had to happen again. Oh, well. Thanks for listening. Also, I noticed people actually watch these, and I would love to know who. Uh, <laughs> my viewer retention analytics would be amazing. Uh, if you've watched this far, do me a favor. Can you comment, we stand and fight? That's about it. I'm going to kill this mushroom and get the heck out of here. Oh, God. This stuff is really painful, you know? Oh, I, I don't know what to compare it to. I don't want to say it. Oh, God. You hear me choking up? <laughs> I don't want to say it's like... I, I don't want to compare it to real life and, like, losing somebody. Because, unf I mean, not say unfortunately. But I just haven't experienced something like that yet. Although it'll happen eventually. But this is ju this is just a weird feeling. Maybe I should make an entire video on this feeling, huh? It's just... Ah, oh God. I love it, and I hate it. Thanks, I hate it. It's literally what this feeling is. And I'm still I'm still going through it. Man. I love a nice sounding guitar. Thank you for watching. Listening to my racist tirade. <laughs>